Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to my little comic corner. Uh, just want to show you some stuff that I picked up recently. I uh, actually got some new stuff which is uh, kind of different for me. Uh, not that I don't buy new stuff, I just I just rarely show it unless it's something that really you know strikes me. Uh, we got some older stuff. Uh, got a couple collections here. Uh, I think in my last video I kind of uh, touched on the subject of the uh, DC Rebirth and I really love the special and I was kind of wondering you know how the uh, the rest of the the line was gonna come out and what it was gonna be like if it was gonna be any good and uh, and to be honest you know I had almost given up on DC and Marvel as far as new stuff I think I still collected uh, and am collecting the Spider-Man and uh, I think Squadron Supreme from Marvel that's about it uh, DC, I had pretty much given up completely on new stuff. I think the only thing I bought from DC that I liked uh, recently was the uh, Swamp Thing miniseries by uh, Ween and uh, Kelly Jones, which was awesome, by the way. Uh, but I heard Rebirth was coming out as well. You know, I'm going to give it a shot. I, like I said, I was not a big fan of the new 52 and the post Flashpoint stuff from DC. Uh, it wasn't a total loss. I mean, most of the Batman stuff was really good. Uh, I thought the Convergence crossover was useless. Uh, I really tried to stick with Justice League because it's like been one of my childhood, you know, favorites uh, since you know the early '70s, and I just I couldn't even hang with Justice League. Uh, when her Rebirth was coming out, well, I'll give it a shot. So I kind of pre-ordered the first uh, couple of months worth of stuff. But of the books I've got uh, this week, uh, for the most part, uh, I was mostly impressed, and impressed is a big word for me because I'm an old guy, and I've been around a long time. I'm reading comic books, you know, for 50 years almost. And uh, but to me, that it's it kind of seemed like DC is maybe trying uh, to bring back what made a lot of these characters great. Now, I know a lot of people really don't like Superman, which is kind of funny to me for a way because Superman is the character that every other character came from, pretty much. Uh, but it, it's, it's not really been a, a good comic to read, uh, Superman or Action or any of the other stuff. And uh, I think with uh, Rebirth, I think they're, they're maybe trying to get back on the right track with him. I said, well, this kind of looks like, you know, uh, the Superman I know. And I know... You, know, you have a lot of young readers now, and uh, and you want those guys to, to love uh, whatever they're putting out. But, uh, you know, just kind of, okay, there was nothing that really appealed to me that uh, said, okay, these are the characters that I grew up with. But, for like I said, for the most part, I was impressed with the Rebirth books. Uh, I really like the Superman books. Uh, Superman Rebirth number one. Really good issue. Really enjoyed uh, Green Arrow. I think they're uh, finally trying to bring him and Black Canary back together. Uh, Flash Rebirth was solid. Uh, kind of touched on some stuff that was in the Rebirth special. So I really enjoyed this one. And uh, I was kind of wondering about Wonder Woman. No pun intended. Because her history and her whole thing has always been kind of convoluted to me. And I think uh, the way it's starting out, they're really trying to uh, maybe bring it all together. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep with these books for a while. I love the Batman book, really cool. Uh, two that really surprised me that I wasn't expecting much out of was uh, Aquaman and uh, Green Lantern. They were both pretty good. Uh, well. These two were, were pretty good reads, but uh, the thing that I'm really kind of excited about is uh, they restarted the original numbering of these two titles, and uh, hopefully in the next four or five years we'll get to see them hit 1,000. Uh, so I got Action Comics 957, where they picked up the original numbering of the title, and another big one, Detective 934. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that for right now. We'll uh, we'll see how the rest of it turns out. I'll say I'm kind of hopeful. Maybe kind of, sort of. 
Okay, uh, some other stuff I had pre-ordered. And uh, this is actually one of my favorite, uh, I guess, titles or groups to read when I was a kid. And uh, since I was such a big fan of the Justice League and the Avengers, it was just natural that I gravitated towards this. But I, uh, I got the Squadron Supreme Omnibus. Now this is a huge book. It's like 1,200 pages. And I think uh, you can kind of see some covers on the back there. It goes all the way back to like uh, the Silver Age Avengers. I think number 69 was the first appearance of uh, the, squ the Squadron Sinister. And later on, I guess another version turned into the Squadron Supreme. And uh, there were uh, a lot of great stories, especially the 12-part uh, the maxi-series that uh, Grunwald wrote uh, back in the early 80s. Just great, great story. Uh, you know, and, and this, these characters came out, you know, they were, a lot of people called them a rip-off of the Justice League. And, uh, but I think of all the interviews I've read and the, the kind of feel that I got from it, that Roy Thomas was actually trying to pay homage to the JLA. And, uh, you know, just almost every JLA had a doppelganger, you know, in this world. But just uh, a lot of reading. And, uh, like I say, it starts out, there's the first appearance. Avengers 69, uh, and I'm not going to go through and show you a whole lot of this, but uh, you have a lot of appearances in uh, the Avengers, the Defenders, uh, Squadron Supreme's own maxi series and mini series. Uh, of course, you've got a great George Perez cover. I think this was taken from like the fifth or sixth issue of uh, the second volume of Avengers. Came out like in the mid '90s, uh, but just some really cool stories. Uh, and a lot of these I haven't uh, actually got to read, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Some of the later ones, but this is uh, this actually goes from maybe 1969. Let me make sure. Yeah, 1969 to like 2008. Uh, so a lot of cool reading, a lot of great art and stories. Like I say, this is a heavy book. You know, somebody breaks in your house, this is what you hit them with. This is, this is a weapon. So, uh, another hardback that I picked up, and I got this from Amazon. Uh, it was actually on sale. Uh, like most everybody else uh, in the community, big Steve Ditko fan. And uh, where I'm a, I'm really a big fan of Charlton Comics. I'm, I'm trying to get a lot of the, the early Ditko stuff he did, like from late 50s, early 60s. Uh, just whatever I can pick up. But uh, here is the, the sixth volume of the Steve Ditko Archives. It's called Outer Limits. And all this is uh, like late 50s, maybe to early 60s, uh, sci-fi stuff he did for Charlton. And I think there's actually uh, some Western stuff in there, Black Fury and uh, Blackjack. And uh, so you get to see, actually, Steve Ditko do some Western stuff. This is all, you know, this is pure Ditko. Uh, so anybody that loves Ditko, uh, let's say there's some of the the Western stuff he did, Black Fury, a lot of the great sci-fi stuff. So anybody that's a Ditko fan fan of the uh, early sci-fi. This is early Silver Age sci-fi. Of course you got great Steve Ditko art all the way through. Yeah, there's a couple covers in the back. I'm out of this world. I think uh, that's a repro of the original art. But you can find these on Amazon or eBay or, you know, there's some more repros of some covers. Just some great looking stuff.
Okay. Uh, got some silver and bronze stuff. Uh, I've been trying to uh, not make it a special effort, but whenever I see one that I don't have, I'm trying to pick up all the uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths crossovers. I've got the original series, you know, big fan. Uh, but there are a lot of crossovers. And here's a couple uh, that I didn't have. Uh, here's Green Lantern 194. I think most of the art and covers were done by uh, Joe Staten and Bruce Patterson. Early appearance by the Monitor and Harbinger. And this is a this is a key not only to Crisis but I guess uh, in the Bronze Age. Uh, this is the uh, first time you get to see Guy Gardner uh, become a Green Lantern. Not a big Guy Gardner fan, but uh, you know I always kind of like. Uh, seeing him get beat down. <laughs> but anyway, uh, key bronze issue and uh, crisis crossover. Okay, got uh, three Silver Age books. Uh, another uh, title I've been trying to collect. I think maybe, uh, I'm not sure, this might be the last issue or Let me take that back. I'm not sure. Anyway, the original run of Thunder Agents uh, didn't last that long, maybe 15 or 20 issues. And uh, I've been trying to get those when I can find them at a good price. Got some great art and stories. Uh, you know, it's like a who's who in art. I mean, you got uh, Chick Stone, Wally Wood, George Tuska, uh, Gil Kane. Uh, and the cool thing about these two is uh, you have Gil Kane covers. So a big shout out to my buddy. Dr. Von Chilla, huge Gil Kane fan. I'm sure he's seen these, but that's a great cover. Thunder Ages number 15. And uh, this original series, I think they're all square bound books, so you get uh, you really get a lot of bang for your buck on these. And here's number 14 with a Raven cover. More Gil Kane. Pretty decent shape. These are probably VG, VG fine. And I'm closing in on uh, completing this title. Maybe uh, two or three away now. Well, always a favorite of mine. Uh, Not Brand Eck, number three. I think this is probably a Marie Severin cover. I think it's uh, pretty sure in this issue, uh, Jack Kirby, Marie Severin, and uh, Tom Sutton. And right there, I mean, that's, you know, three of my favorites, especially Tom Sutton. So really a fun little title to collect. I think there were only maybe uh, 12, 13 issues, if I'm not mistaken. So, guys, that's all i got for now. Thanks for hanging around. And as always, Auburn and Upper.